welcome back to my channel and welcome to my farmhouse kitchen. So in today's video, I am going to share with you all of my favorite kitchen gadgets and tools and products that I use that you can find on Amazon. If you are new around here, welcome. My name is Becca. I'm a registered dietitian. I am the creator of the Mindful Eating Made Simple program, and I am obviously very passionate about nutrition, with balance, of course, but if you want to eat a lot of real whole food, which is my goal, you definitely have to cook and prepare a lot of it yourself. So I spend a lot of time in the kitchen. I actually love to be in the kitchen, but you definitely need the right tools. You need the right equipment in order to make a lot of your own food. Doesn't have to be super fancy. Um, really good basics will go a very long way. So I'm going to share with you things that you can literally buy on Amazon super easily, super easily and affordably to be able to cook at home. These are all things that I use on a daily, if not very regular basis and would highly recommend. Okay, you guys, so I have kind of gathered all of my favorite kitchen Amazon finds and I'm just gonna kind of rapid fire, go through each one and tell you what I use. So the very first thing is actually my espresso machine. The love I have for that appliance is so real, you guys. It's truly like my favorite appliance outside of like an oven and a refrigerator. It is my favorite thing. So every morning I make myself a latte with steamed like whole milk that I get from a local farmer. And it is just, it is like a high point of my day. I love coffee. I love good coffee. Only warning if you're going to get one of these, it's very real that you will become a coffee snob and regular old coffee will just not do it for you anymore. I think it's a worthy trade-off because you will probably make all of your own coffee for the most part. You won't need to go out to Starbucks or wherever else to buy expensive drinks because you'll be able to make them at home and they will taste even better. So highly, highly recommend an espresso machine. It's definitely an investment, but you can get the one that I have on Amazon and it's, I've had it for, I think like two, two years now and I love it. Love it. Love it. One of the best purchases I've ever made for the kitchen. Okay. Another favorite appliance of mine, and this is not an investment. This is definitely a really budget friendly appliance and that is an instant pot. I love this thing. I use it for a lot of different purposes in the kitchen. I don't make whole meals in here. I haven't really ventured into that. Anything I've tried just doesn't taste as good, um, but I do think in a pinch it could definitely be used for that. And maybe I just need to experiment more. If you guys have like favorite Instant Pot meals, maybe leave them down below um, and I'll, I'll give them a try. But I do use this for a lot of different cooking methods in the kitchen. On my most recent What I Ate In A Day video, I showed you three different ways I use it. I made oats, um, I have hard boiled eggs, which is like one of the best hacks, and I made my taco chicken. But um, I could do a whole, I really should just do a whole video on all of the ways that I use this. Um, but it definitely helps you cut corners, it helps cooking time go down. You don't have to babysit things on the stove. Um, and it's just, it's very convenient. I love being able to throw stuff in here and it always cooks things perfectly. So again, throw stuff in, you can walk away, you don't have to babysit it. So it really saves a lot of time, um, you know, and a lot of like your attention and everything obviously cooks faster because it's under pressure, which temperatures can get higher. Pressure cooking is really an awesome hack. So love, love, love my Instant Pot. Highly recommend it. I use it for so many different things. Okay, and then we're just gonna keep going with like big cooking items and then we'll get to the little stuff. So the next thing is a good old fashioned cast iron skillet. This is the Lodge brand. It's very affordable. You can get this again on Amazon. I love this skillet. We use it every single day day. I do also have a smaller um, skillet that we do use. It's a, um, it's a, a La Crusade, so it's a much more expensive one. And I actually reach for this one more because one, it's bigger. That's the, the first reason. Um, but I think it cooks just as well as the very expensive one that I have. And that's like, if I need to use two, I'll use the La Crusade, but I actually reach for the large one more. This is what we use more. So, um, we cook just about everything in here. Uh, we don't use any kind of Teflon or nonstick. Um, I don't use stainless steel because I don't know. I just don't. Um, I just use everything in cast iron. So we cook everything from scrambled eggs to ground beef to 
oh God, we cook everything in here. Chicken. I mean, pretty much anything I'm doing on the stove top, it's, it's in a cast iron skillet because that's all that we have. So love this one. Um, they last forever if you take care of them. I have an entire video talking about how to actually use and season and take care of cast iron so it will last forever. I used to be so intimidated before I had cast iron, like seasoning it sound like really labor intensive and like overwhelming. And I was like, I'd rather just use a pan that I can just like clean, <laughs> but it's actually so easy. It's like not a thing. So cast iron skill. I love the lodge one. Um, and this is, I think it's 12 inch. I don't know. I'll link the one that I have down below. Okay. Another lodge favorite is this big Dutch oven. So we use this, this is like my go to pot. Um, I don't have normal pots and pans. Like I don't have stainless steel pans. This is all I use, which is really nice because it totally cuts down on clutter and anything I could ever want to make, even like a big batch of soup will fit in this pot. Um, so this is, this is, this is what I use again. It's lodge. So it's, um, a, an affordable brand and it's enameled cast iron. So it has this like coating on it. Um, but yeah, we use this for everything like soups, chili, um, anything I'm making in a pot. I don't know why I feel like my brain's not working right now, but this is, this is what I use this is what I reach for every single day. Um, you can bake bread in here in the oven. We use it for all, just all kinds of stuff. Dutch ovens are very, um, like universal. You can use them for a lot of different things. And we certainly use this one a lot. Okay. Next up are these big, um, glass mixing bowls. These are pretty much like my go-to mixing bowl for anything I need to use. I don't use plastic. Um, and I love that these are like heavy duty. They are really big. So if I'm mixing up, like if I'm making like, you know, two, let's say like two loaves of sourdough bread, that's a lot of flour. It's like a thousand grams of flour. And this bowl can certainly handle that. Um, it's easy to mix if we're baking, if we're making bread, um, if I'm mixing up a big salad, this is just what I go for. These are the most used mixing bowls in our kitchen. I do have a couple other, like other ones, um, that we use, but I honestly could do without those. And these would be like multi-purpose. Anything you would ever need to mix would fit in here. And, um, I just like that they're glass. Obviously if you were to drop one, it would probably break. So maybe that's a thing, but, um, I've never had a problem. I have small kids. It's never been a thing. So love, love, love these mixing bowls. And it comes in a pack of two. Okay. So then speaking of glass, I love these anchor, um, jars. So this is a full gallon one. And then this is a half gallon one and these get so much use. So this is where I keep um, all purpose flour. Um, so I have a, I have a huge, like the five gallon plastic food grade containers where I buy like 50 pound bags of flour and then I fill up those. So I buy the flour in bulk, like organic, um, usually from like central milling that I get from Azure standard anyway. So I will keep those in our pantry, but then I fill this up. So in the kitchen, it's just like an easy grab flour is right there and available. Um, so I like this really big one for that. And then I've got the smaller guy. This is my sourdough starter. I just took it out of the fridge. So it like is, looks like there's like nothing in there, but, um, this is what I use for everything sourdough. I've had the starter for a while and I love this jar because it obviously doesn't have like a rubber seal. So you can put it on top. It's going to allow airflow, which your sourdough starter needs to breathe. Um, but I'm not fussing around with like cloth over the top that can get like nasty and like rubber bands or anything like that. It's just poop. It's just super easy. I've used this same jar for years for my starter. Every once in a while, I'll like take all the starter out, clean it, and then put the starter back in. But that's honestly pretty rare. So this is my sourdough starter. It smells so good. Um, love these jars and they are like a daily use. They've been in use for years now. They're a must for me. Okay. Now I'm going to move on to the smaller stuff. And before I did, I wanted to mention this apron because it makes me so happy and I'm so obsessed with it. It has chickens on it. And you guys know um, that I have chickens. I love yes. my chickens. They are just near and dear to our hearts here on our little farm. And, um, this apron just makes me smile every day. I found it on Amazon recently from like the cutest shop with the cutest. I mean, by cutest, I mean like slightly granny chic, but also like very French European, beautiful, um, like textiles. I'll link that down below. I almost like don't want to tell anyone about it. It feels like my little secret shop. Um, I just put like little cafe curtains up in my wind in my windows in the kitchen from the same shop 
fabulous, like very much my style. Anyway, so I'll link this apron down below. I love it. If you don't have an apron, get yourself an apron. Get one on Amazon, they're not that expensive. Putting on an apron, there's something about it. It just makes you feel like, I am like here to cook. I know what I'm doing. It just like weirdly gives me this like confidence that like I can just like make a mess and like really get in there and do it. I'm not gonna like mess up my clothes. Not that I even really care about messing up my clothes, but there is just something mental about an apron. It just makes you feel like you are just on top of things. I don't know why, but get yourself an apron if you don't have one. Okay, so smaller stuff. I wanted to mention we have a set of, we have a bunch of them down here, these Pyrex just glass bowls with lids. And these are how we store food. We don't use plastic anything to store food. I mean, technically these lids are plastic, but they don't ever really come in contact with the food very much. Um, all about the glass storage. And we've had these, this specific set, like since I got married years ago, and we still have all of them. They've held up super well and they are what we use to store food, so we don't really go a day without using these. Okay, other glass favorites, wide mouth mason jars. So I love these. We do store food in them. Um, I don't do like a ton of canning, although I would love to do some more canning. I think I might like really try my hand at that this summer. Um, I've done some, like I have a canner, but I don't, I'm not like a canning person, but maybe in the future. Anyway, so these are, we do use them to like store food. Like I'll, I'll put stuff in here and store them in the fridge, but they're actually really what we use for our glasses, especially like these wide mouth ones are basically cups. Um, and it's great because they're multi-purpose. So you don't have to like buy cups necessarily. You can use these as your cups. They're very sturdy. Um, we actually just had one. Um, my daughter was playing with water in the sink. Kids love that. And I should have taken this out. I knew better, but she dropped it and she didn't get cut or anything, but it did shatter because it hit another glass bowl in the sink. Um, but otherwise we've, that's like, that's the first time we've ever had one of those break and we use these a lot. So, um, I love these jars, the wide mouth ones specifically for cups. I also have, I'll link them down below. I also have bigger sizes of these. Like we have like varying sizes of Mason jars. Um, I like the bigger ones for sauerkraut, making sauerkraut and then like storing that in the fridge once it's done fermenting. Um, but we just use jars for lots of different things. So we need to have lots of jars available in the kitchen. Okay, so next I want to share just some of my favorite cooking utensils. So I have a few different things right here. So first off, these um, OXO, OXO, I don't know how it's actually pronounced. Um, these are uh, pretty much an everyday use, especially the spatula. If you're gonna be cooking a lot, especially on like cast iron, which is like tough, I feel like you just, you like, you don't want a plastic spatula. One, you don't want plastic coming in contact with a burning hot pan and like leaching who knows what into your food. But also they just don't stand up very well. They like bend, they I don't know, they like melt. Just no. So these are like stainless steel, I guess. They're very tough. They can cook pretty much everything. I have two of them um, and they get used pretty much every single day. I also love this ladle. I feel the same thing about, if you're like ladling super hot soup or chili um, or stew with a plastic ladle, again, you really just don't want hot or plastic coming in contact with heat because it will leach chemicals. And if you're cooking all this beautiful food, it's just, you just don't want to be like sticking plastic in there. Um, and I actually, when I got married, I got a set of all plastic stuff. And over time, you know, like not that these are crazy expensive, but like you just don't really want to like buy something you already have. Um, but if it's important to you, like it is to me, just slowly switch them out over time. And that's what I did. I just like started with one spatula and then, you know, ended up getting two and now we've got the ladle and whatever. So all of the stuff that we use for hot food is either stainless steel or wood. Um, I will link these below down, down below as well. These are actually the Martha Stewart brand and I just really like these. I've had these for years. This is like my go-to. I do love, I do love this, but I actually probably reach for this more. It's very sturdy. I love it to cook like um, break up like ground beef or like, I don't know, anything that just needs like some sauteing. I actually reach for this so much more than this, but I do use this, especially like scrambled eggs, like to really like get them in the cast iron pan. Um, anyway, so love some wood cooking utensils. I like the spoon for um, like mixing soups or stirring, anything like that. I always think that these are really great to have in the kitchen, just like a nice set of these. Um, and I have a few more, but these are probably the two I reach for the most. And then this, 
specific rubber spatula is like a life-changing rubber spatula. It's actually from Pampered Chef. And maybe if you know someone that sells Pampered Chef, go to them and buy it from them to support them. But if not, I don't know anyone that does. I found this um, on Amazon and it is like the best rubber spatula. Like, I, like I've heard P Pampered Chef people talk about how amazing the rubber spatula was and like they're totally right. It's like really, it's really good. I don't know how to even describe it. Like I have one of the OXO brand rubber spatulas, which is just like, you know, it's like a decent rubber spatula. I, I don't like, I, I, if this one's dirty, I'm like, oh, I gotta use the other one. Like this one is just my favorite. There's just something about it. It's just, it's just they've done everything right creating this. So love this, I will also link it. Okay, so some other kitchen staples, measuring cups. These are a must. I love these stainless steel ones, again, Plastic, not my favorite. I had a set of plastic ones forever. Finally, just, you know, found a cheap set on Amazon. It's like not that big of a deal. Just replaced them, Becca, and I did. And we've been using these for a while. Um, and also they're just, I feel like they're just sturdier. And, you know, everybody needs measuring cups. I also have stainless steel measuring spoons, but they're not on Amazon. They're like cute rooster ones that I've also had forever. I don't even know where they're from. Um, but you could, I would also get, you know, those on Amazon as well if you maybe are using plastic. Okay, this next one is another like game-changing kitchen gadget. I'm not a big kitchen gadget girl. Like I don't have a bunch of fancy stuff because I just feel like most of it you're not really going to use and it's just gonna take up space and you can get by with the basics. But this is one of those things that I think is 1000% worth it over just using like the chef's knife you have in your kitchen. So it's a garlic press. Um, so if you, if you cook with a lot of garlic, which I do, pretty much every meal I make, I add garlic to it because it just adds so much flavor. Um, garlic is also has a lot of health benefits, especially when it's not like, when it's still raw. Anyway, so if you've ever minced garlic, you know it's like, it takes a, a fair bit of time for the like the small amount that you're using and this thing will change the game. So you just put the cloves in here, you crush them, it comes right out and then it comes with this little brush which I feel like is a game changer. I feel like a lot of the garlic presses I see, have seen or when I was like looking to actually link this one, the other ones I was seeing on Amazon don't have this. So one, I've recently realized that you use this side of it to like scrape the garlic that's been pressed off and it scrapes it right off and then it just leaves like the excess inside. But then this little brush perfectly matches up with the holes. So when you're trying to like clean it out and rinse it out, you just stick this little brush in and it pushes all the like garlic up out of the holes that's left over. Makes cleaning it an absolute breeze. So you're not like getting in there and like trying to pick it out or anything like that. Um, oh, this is also Pampered Chef. Didn't know that. You learn something new every day. But I found this exact one, so um, I'll link it for you. Okay, next, bench scraper. If you are a bread baker like I am, then you need to have one of these. This one is plastic. Um, it's not coming in contact with anything hot, so it doesn't really bother me. You can get stainless steel ones, but this one has been very trusty. It's held up very well. I see no real reason to replace it. Um, and you use this to like help scoop like loaves up off the ground without like squishing them with your fingers and trying to pick them up. So if you bake bread, this is a must and I just really like this real simple one. Okay, next is a cheese grater. This is a very simple thing to have in your kitchen. Um, you can grate all sorts of things on here. You can like julienne carrots and you can mince stuff and um, lemon zest and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but for me, the most basic thing is just shredding cheese. I'm trying to get away from um, buying already shredded cheese. One, it's more expensive than just buying it, cheese in its natural form. Um, but also they add ingredients to it to help it from caking and to help it last longer. And I'm just trying to, you know, go back to basics as much as possible. And shredding cheese literally takes 30 seconds. Like it is the shortest thing. It's easy to clean. Um, to me, it's totally worth it to not you know, spend the extra money on shredded cheese. And um, I, you can get like big giant, I'm getting like this month on my Azure order, big giant block of like raw cheese. So um, this is what I use to shred cheese now. And the flavor is so much better. Like that alone is a reason to get yourself a cheese grater, go the extra mile. Really it's like the extra inch. It's not a hard thing to do. Um, so I love this one. Okay, next, flour sack towels. These are a big favorite of mine. These are like my go-to kitchen 
towel. Um, I have plain white ones. I have like cute printed ones. Um, there's a specific brand that I always buy from Amazon that has like plain ones, but also like cute seasonal ones that I really like um, if you want to get like fancy with it. But these are just like my favorite towel. These are what I use, especially if I am um, like mixing up dough and then I'm gonna like ferment it overnight in one of these big bowls and it needs to be covered with a towel. This is what I use because it's not like terry cloth, like nothing's gonna get like stuck to it. Um, they're just great and I love them. I have no complaints and they last forever and I've used these for a long time. Okay, and then another obviously everyday kitchen item that we use, it's like a total must if you're gonna be cooking, is a good knife set. So I will link the knife set that I have down below. It's available on Amazon and um, it's definitely like an investment, but you are gonna, like you need knives if you're going to cook. Um, and these are like, this is, this actually isn't a chef's knife. I forget the name of this one because um, it has a pointy top. Totally forget, but I kind of use this interchangeably with my chef's knife and that's like my go-to. Most things I'm cutting up, um, when it comes to like chopping and you know preparing food for like dinner or like big meals is a knife like that so you're going to need something like that and then it also comes with a bunch of these smaller ones as well and this is what i use for just like quick every day like slicing up an apple for the girls or um just more like a quick grab i'm not like chopping i'm just more like slicing this is what i will use and i also mentioned they, it does come with um like a really nice pair of kitchen scissors which I think are really nice to have in the kitchen as well. It's a whole set, I just grabbed a few of the things, but we use all of these knives pretty much. It also has a bread knife, use that for slicing bread um, that I make. So highly recommend, you need a good sharp set of knives. Um, if you're gonna be cooking a lot, you definitely, I think this is a good area to invest in. Okay, and then the last thing I wanted to share with you guys is actually a few cookbooks, because if you're gonna be cooking, um, it's really nice to have a few good cookbooks on hand that you can use and reference. I mean, obviously online is like a wealth of information. There is 50 versions of every possible recipe more than probably that you could ever find. But I also feel like sometimes that can be really paralyzing because you're, you look up a recipe and you're like, is this even gonna be good? Like, and then all of a sudden there's like, oh, but there's this blog has one and they just use like lemon juice instead of lemon zest and like maybe that's better. And, and then all of a sudden you get like paralyzed because there's just almost too many options. So I actually love, this just the simplicity of cookbooks. I love having a cookbook out on my counter. It just makes me happy. It makes me want to cook. Um, so I just wanted to point out a few that are on Amazon. Um, that I go to the most out of all the ones that I have. And I have a decent amount because I kind of like to collect cookbooks. So this first one is actually a bread book. It's called Bread Baking for Beginners. One of my favorite books. Um, this is what actually got me to like embrace cooking bread and it not be this like really technical, complicated, like artisan level situation that stresses me out and I want nothing to do with it. Just totally zaps the fun out of it for me and it makes me not want to do it. So this is way more approachable. She goes through like regular yeasted breads, but in the back she has her sourdough recipes, which is typically what I do and use. And I love her recipe. I've made it a bunch of times, her sourdough bread, um, at least her like intermediate one. And I just really love this book. So if you wanna get into baking bread, um, especially sourdough, maybe you're a little intimidated. I bought another sourdough book years ago when I was like, I'm gonna make sourdough bread. And it's literally so technical. Like I still, I'm, I'm pretty good at it now. And I still read that and I'm like, what is all of this? Like I just don't even know what to do with all of these numbers and information. Like that's not how my brain works. So highly recommend that book if you are, are a beginner. Um, this one is um, Shay Elliott's, one of her books. It's The Family Table. I think it's her most recent book. And it's a really, it's a really a good one. Um, I've made a lot of these recipes, like a handful of them, multiple times. She's got everything from breakfast to like soups and salads to main courses. She's got desserts, pretty typical for a cookbook. Um, but it's all about using just like real fresh ingredients. They're not like super long ingredient lists with like crazy strange ingredients that like n most people don't have in their pantry. Very approachable, um, very healthy, and really very tasty. Everything we've made, we really liked. So I love that cookbook. And then speaking of like approachable, healthy, delicious, this is another favorite of mine. As you can see, I have tabs in here. I have a bunch of dog ears of recipes that like I've either tried and gone back to or want to make in the future. So many of these are um, just 
like really good recipes. I love her blog. She's got a lot of stuff on her blog. She's a very, very, very popular blogger and she has multiple books, but this is the only one that I have and I really like it. It's the same thing. It goes through like everything, breakfast, soup, salad, you know, chicken, beef, um, desserts, Highly recommend it. I've made a lot of these multiple times. So those would be like the two cookbooks I would grab if you're kind of like wanting to get more into cooking. And then if you want to get into making bread, definitely that bread baking book is awesome. Okay, you guys, so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. I will link all of these things down below on Amazon for you if you want to shop from my Amazon store. And if you do, I do get a little bit of a kickback at no extra cost to you. So I would so appreciate you shopping through my links and my store if you found this video helpful and you plan to purchase one of these things. But that is all I have. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Instagram too. I'm just at Becca Bristow over there. Would love to hang um, on that platform as well. But that is all I have. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.